Here is another example. This one is even more mysterious. We need to find the image of a vector x under the action of the linear transformation t. And x is given as a vector from R3, 2, negative 2, 1. So we need to find t of x. Now, here is the mystery. The linear transformation t is a linear transformation working on vectors from R3 and producing, as a result, vectors in R2. But we don't know what is the linear transformation. It is only described by its representation matrix relative to the basis B for R3 and basis C for R2. And this is the representation matrix. And basis B for R3 is given by these three vectors here, V1, V2, V3. And basis C of R2 is given by vectors U1 and U2. Okay, so we know the basis B, what are the vectors? We know the, the vectors for basis C. We know the representation matrix of our linear transformation relative to the basis B, C. And that's all we know. But we don't know what's the linear transformation itself. Well, we don't need to. That's the point. So we have X that is a vector in R3. Okay, so before we start working, I just want to remind you what does this mean? This representation matrix relative to the basis B and C. What does it mean? Well, the first column is the image, actually the coordinates in basis C of the image of the vector V1. So T of V1, so when we, are, when we are building this in general, what we do, we apply T to the basis vector from the domain, so T of V1, and then we find the coordinates in C, so those coordinates are 1 and 2. That's what this representation matrix tells us. The coordinates in basis C of the vector of the image of the vector V1 under the action of the linear transformation T are 1, 2. That's what it means. The same thing, the coordinates in basis C of the image under the action of T of the basis vector V2 on the domain are in the second column. So these are the coordinates in basis C. And similarly for the third basis vector, the coordinates in basis C of the image of the third basis vector of the domain are given in the third column of the representation matrix. So you see it tells you T is working on basis vectors from B and here are the coordinates of the images in basis C. So that's the meaning of it. Okay? It's not required now, but it's just good to know what this represents. Okay, so what I have is this representation matrix relative to the basis B and C. And my goal is to find T of X, and X is given here. Well, this representation matrix multiplies coordinates of a vector in basis B. So my first step will be to find the coordinates of X in the basis B. And then I will be able to work with this. So once I do that, what I get when I do the product is the coordinates of the result in the basis C. And then I use the definition of the coordinates and I find the uh, T of X at the end. So schematically what this means, so step one, find the coordinates of the vector X given here, the vector x is given, I need to find his coordinates in basis b. Step 2, do the product, the representation matrix relative to basis b, c, and the coordinates of 
b of the vector x relative to the basis b. What I get as a result are the coordinates of the image in the basis c. And finally, step three, I use these coordinates to explode the things, let's say, so these will have two coordinates a and b, so let's say it's a and b. So what I need to do now, t of x is a times u1 plus b times u2, and then I'm done. Because I'm going to get coordinates in basis c, r2, and then I just need to remember what this means. It means that these are the coefficients in the linear combination. So that's how we will proceed in three simple steps. First one, find the coordinates of the vector x in basis b, and then we will use the representation matrix, do the product. What this gives us are the coordinates in basis c of the image. Once we know those, we just write the images of linear combination using these two coordinates. Very simple, actually. So let's go. So in order to use the representation matrix BC, we first need to find the coordinates of the vector x in the basis B, as we stated. So we need to find those coordinates. What are those coordinates? It's just the linear combination here. So it's very simple. We need to solve the linear system by gauss jordan So we put the first, second, and third vector of the basis B in the columns, slash the victim x, and then we solve. So that's going to take some time to solve. Once we solve it, what we are getting are the coordinates of x in basis B. That's it. So after a couple of minutes of working, we get these coordinates. But that's great. Now we can use them. So now we can use our representation matrix and the coordinates we found to find the coordinates of the image in basis C. So just do the product. So representation matrix relative to basis B and C times the coordinates of X in basis B. What we get is the coordinates in basis C, uh, C of the image Tx. OK, cool. So when we compute all this, we get 19 and 25. So these are the coordinates of the image Tx in basis C. OK, we are almost there. We are going to use now the definition of the coordinates. What does it mean? So since the coordinates are 19 and 25 in basis C, this means that T of x is 19 times the first basis vector of basis C plus 25 times the second basis vector of basis C. So we just plug them in, get the result. So the result is 6984. So the image of the vector 2, minus 2, 1, under the action of the linear transformation T, is the vector 6994. And remember, we didn't even know what was the linear transformation. Yet, we are able to find the image of the vector x under this linear transformation that is still mysterious. But since we were given the basis B and C, and we were given also the representation matrix of the linear transformation, well, we were able to do the job, even without actually knowing what is the linear transformation itself. It was not so important. So that's the procedure that we are going to follow in general. So whenever we are given these type of problems, these three steps here will be important to follow just logically. Find the coordinates first, use the representation matrix times the coordinates. You're going to get the coordinates in basis C of the image, then write it as a linear combination. And that's pretty much what it is. It's as simple as that. Even though it looked very scary at the beginning, we didn't know what was the linear transformation. We were just given the representation matrix relative to basis B and C. So after all, when we look closely, all this is pretty easy and straightforward. There is some work involved related to 
the uh, finding the coordinates, so solving a linear system using our Jordan, but other than that, it's all pretty straightforward. Just a little bit of practice and you should be fine.